What's going on, Ray? So today, I just want to give you guys a quick rundown of Leo and give you guys the build that I'm running and things to consider when you're building out Leo. A lot of people have been dropping comments uh, over the past couple of days talking about Leo and how impressive he's been just in my showcases, even though I wasn't even meaning to showcase Leo, um, which I have done on this channel. But, um, you know, a lot of people were just I was comparing Daniel, things like this, and then Leo was just topping the damage charts because there's a few areas of the game that he really truly shines in. I want to mention those really quickly here on this video, as well as give you guys basically the build that I've been running on him and that I think is arguably one of the best builds on him. Let's get into it. All right, so before we jump into the build and everything for Leo, I just want to talk about his skills here. There's a few things that really, really make Leo absolutely absurd. Uh, and it's mainly his passive right here. When he enters the battlefield, he's going to gain a permanent base attack boost of 1.5% of his maximum HP, which makes him very, very versatile. And then also he's going to get more attack as his HP is lowered, which means as he gets lower um, in HP, as he's tanking up those hits, he's going to go ahead and get more attack up to, you know, 100% attack essentially, or 99% attack. On top of that, he's going to defy death when he reaches that 0% HP, which is very, very big because when this happens, he's going to go ahead and basically tank a bunch of damage and then be able to lifesteal up with his ultimate, which is basically just a spin, can't crit, but he's going to have 35% lifesteal on that effect. Then he also has this other ability, which just does an AOE damage and increasing the damage taken by 15%, which is also really, really good for the rest of your team. Now, the first thing I want to look at is this passive, okay? So we're getting attack based on his 1.5% of his maximum HP. So if we look into the base HP here, and I pull up a calculator, the uh, main stats are going to be 50% of attack or 50% of HP. So if we look at this, we go 791,000, um, right? That's how much HP he has. And we multiply that by 0.5. We're getting a 395,000 HP in addition on his main stat. Now, if we multiply that by 0 0.015, we'll find that we're getting about 5,932 attack from that HP. If we compare that to his attack right here, 50% uh, of that attack will be, well, let's go ahead and do the math. Times 0.5, 6,850. So if we were to go with attack pieces, we would only be gaining a marginal amount of attack over. So you could say marginal, but a slightly increased attack. It wouldn't be that consequential to his overall DPS in the grand scheme of things, because he would be incredibly, incredibly squishy comparatively, because his defense is one of the lowest in the game. I shouldn't say one of the lowest, but one of the lowest for the tankier Vanguard slash tank characters, which means if he's frontlining, he's going to take a massive damage very quickly. And so, Really, you need that HP to survive on him, and you're actually not sacrificing that much attack to be able to do so. And oftentimes, you can run attack percentage substats, which can make it very, very useful. And that's exactly what we have here. So you'll notice, first off, my sets are going to be attack and HP. Whatever I could find, if I can go for more HP, I'd go for it. If I can go for more attack, I can go for it, right? Either way, works for me. And then I'm going to be looking for HP main stat with attack percentage substats and flat HP substats. Not only that, but also I'm looking for damage reduction because if we're pairing damage reduction with that HP, that's going to make him very, very survivable. Um, but the main portion of Leo, the main basically advantage of Leo is that he's going to be offering a ton of damage. So we want that attack. We want the HP. That is why that's the prioritization. And then after that, if we want to amplify his tankiness a little bit, damage reduction really helps out. But again, we have attack percentage, flat HP here. We have attack percentage, HP percentage, and damage reduction, and flat attack, which this is like an absolute perfect uh, piece right here. Then we have uh, attack percentage, damage reduction, HP percentage, once again, a really, really great piece. And then flat HP, attack percentage, and HP percentage, again, a pretty solid piece for Leo. If you want to amplify his defense a little bit, it can work, but the fact is that he has such a low base defense compared to his other vanguards that he's not really getting much benefit from defense percentage pieces, and so I tend to kind of ignore those pieces a little bit. On top of that, guys, uh, that, now that we've gone over his stats and what we're looking for, going over his talents here, there's a few that are very, very important. You really want this first one, the skill has 35% lifesteal effect. 
On top of that, um, just, you know, gradually going ahead and getting the rest of his talents is going to be very, very useful. But this one in particular, the Raging Wave, this means that uh, you no longer have an, a limit to how much attack you can increase when he's below that certain HP cap. I think that talent is very, very important. As for exclusives, guys, um, obviously you're going to want to get his exclusive ups, uh, exclusives up because you're going to get that damage amp, which is going to amp up the increased attack that he's going to have at low HP. But he's also going to amp up his HP, which is going to give him more attack and he's going to get more damage reduction, which is super, super impactful with this large HP pool. Um, after that, guys, um, the uh, the first exclusive, which you immediately unlock, increases the damage immunity by two seconds, which is a big deal. But then also, um, his third and fourth exclusive at exclusive 20 and exclusive 30 are actually really, really nice because when he procs that, um, you know, undying, he's going to go ahead and immediately recover a bunch of energy and he's gonna make that skill do 50% additional damage. This makes it so that he can immediately life steal back up for, you know, basically when he end exits that field. But then also he's gonna do massive damage because that damage is going to be amped up by his low HP pool, which makes him do some insane damage. So his exclusives are pretty important. Other than that, guys, um, that's gonna be his stats, it's gonna be his talents it's going to be his skills and things like that just to go really quickly through the game modes here and mention what he's really really good at you guys have seen a plenty of videos on this channel talking about that and that's why i'm making this video in the first place terra dome it's kind of a no-brainer um he's just a good melee character he can life steal and oftentimes solo tank in this game mode and that's why he's in there for me after that Sinsaro Marsh, especially on manual if you guys want to just beat the stage um, and use your ted tokens whatever it is every day He's actually quite good in Sinsaro Marsh if you manual him through the bosses. Uh, after that, guys, he's going to be absolutely busted in PvP. This is something that you really, 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 really should not underestimate, okay? Um, I'll just go ahead and show a match here because this is something that I haven't really shown too much here. And I don't even know if he's in my PvP. Yeah, he is in my PvP squad right now. Um, but he actually just crushes through the enemies. It's very, very difficult to take him, take him down. And even if you do manage to take him down, you know, he's going to be destroying your teams. And honestly, this is just a completely stacked team right now. So we're not going to really see the extreme value of Leo here. Uh, but actually, you know, Ravenna is taking out our team right now. And then Leo is going to go ahead and spin on her, which again, we didn't get any damage from Leo. So this was kind of a poor showcase. But let me see if I can fight a tougher battle that we might actually end up losing. Um, but we could just show off Leo in that capacity. So we'll do against this 1.8 million squad and we'll see if we can get some big damage out from Leo. So again, he's going to be tanking up all that stuff up in front. And you'll see here, he actually might be able to just absolutely annihilate. I mean, check out that damage immediately as soon as he gets a single charge off. He is going to be absorbing all that damage. He's going to be basically unkillable here. Um, and he's going to be life stealing up. Obviously, there's uh, so many counters to him. Uh, I shouldn't say so many counters, but there are counters to him. It's not un beatable but he's certainly very very good in pvp and someone that i've really enjoyed using and definitely going to be using in summit arena to just purely carry my own lineup right in this third match i have leo as his solo carry right here um and that's because he's just that good so very very good in pvp very very good in summit arena he's going to solo carry your when fear and this is something that's super super important because uh, what you'll end up finding is he is going to just run through story and that includes, you know, the soul mine. The story is arguably one of the most powerful things that he's good at. Now, uh, this is a pretty tough stage. As you can see, he's absolutely getting crushed in terms of his damage. And I don't actually have um, his stuff off of auto right now. So let me just reshow that again. But just to give you guys an idea on how much damage this guy is actually able to dish out right here, let's go ahead and just charge into the back line uh, and compare him to some of the other damage dealers that I have on the field right now. Um, we have some people off auto. Just go ahead and, and crush through the team drop daniel we're auto or manualing everything here right but look at the damage comparatively um right we have daniel's aoe out and he's doing amazing damage right there's no doubt about it but i mean it just doesn't compare to leo right leo is just absolutely crushing it and i think this is something that a lot of people really really value when they're going through here and let me just turn all this stuff on daniel or on auto again um when you get to about stage 40, it's kind of tough to auto through some campaign stages. But as you can see here, we're actually able to crush it. So 
definitely, definitely someone that's going to absolutely carry you as a solo carry through a lot of content, especially in storyline and especially in the soul mind, which you'll find uh, he's been absolutely beneficial for. And one last thing, guys. Um, Currently, Ancient Altar is settling for me, but he's actually going to solo carry you through that first boss fight. If you only have him, he can oftentimes take a health bar or two on his own, and that first boss fight is going to be something that's going to be incredibly difficult, even for the late game players, uh, for you guys to go ahead and actually beat. And so Leo gives you an option to go ahead and just solo run him and then save the rest of your team for the rest of your fights, but then have Leo just kind of crush a couple of health bars on his own. So that's going to be the build, guys. That's going to be my experience with Leo. Hopefully you guys get some massive value out of him. I definitely think a lot of people can. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to like the video, sub to the channel. I'll see you all tomorrow.